This episode of Aquarium Hobbyist Podcast with Aqua Alex is brought to you by Aquaplenish, the first electronic water change system providing fish keepers with easier water changes. Check them out at www.aquaplenish.com for more info. You are listening to the Aquarium Hobbyist Podcast with Aqua Alex. On the Aquarium Hobbyist Podcast, any and everything tropical fish and aquariums will be discussed. From freshwater to saltwater, cichlids to clownfish, Aqua Alex has you covered. What tropical fish topic is up for discussion today? Let's find out. Aqua Alex, take it away. Hello, tropical fish keepers. Welcome to Aquarium Hobbyist Podcast. I'm your host, Aqua Alice Cardinelli, coming to you from my fish room here in Springfield, Massachusetts. I hope all my fish-keeping listeners out there are doing great. I hope you're enjoying the aquarium hobby, and I hope you're ready for another episode of Aquarium Hobbyist Podcast. Today is Wednesday, and that means we're kind of in the beginning of a new week. We're in the middle of the week, but it's still... The week, so it's time for fish of the week. This week, I'm going to be discussing my second saltwater fish. Now, if you guys remember my last saltwater fish that was fish of the week, I discussed my favorite clownfish species, the maroon clownfish. Today, I'm going to be discussing another favorite saltwater fish of mine, and this saltwater fish happens to belong to the pufferfish family, and I really love pufferfish. So, I love fish with personalities, and I know that my listeners know that because I love Oscar, I love monster cichlids, and monster fish. I love fish that can be considered a wet pet. I love fish that can be considered an underwater puppy and underwater dog. Now, when we think of fish with these characteristics, we often think of freshwater monster cichlids or monsters like red-tailed catfish. But saltwater has many fish with these traits. One of these fish is loved by many saltwater fish keepers, and it has a fitting name. It does have the same exact traits of a dog. One group of fish that I really enjoy studying, researching, and keeping is the puffer fish. Puffer fish live in salt water, fresh water, and brackish water, but a big majority of them are salt water. This week's fish of the week is a puffer fish that is cute, personable, and has the traits of a puppy. Now, a lot of times when people think of saltwater puffers, the first puffer that comes to mind is the porcupine puffer, and I do love the porcupine puffer, but today we're talking about another common saltwater puffer fish. This week. July 18th, 2018 to July 22nd, 2018, Fish of the Week is the dog face puffer fish, Aerofron nigropunctuous. That's right, the dog face puffer is this week's Fish of the Week. Now, find out how to keep and care for the dog face puffer on this show. So if you're a saltwater fish keeper and you want something with a lot of personality in your tank, the dog face puffer may be for you. So make sure you listen to the end to get some information on the dog face puffer. Or if you plan on getting into saltwater hobby eventually, listen to the show to learn about dog face puffers. Now, before I discuss how to keep and care for the dog face puffer and give you information on the dog face puffer, I'm going to begin by discussing why I personally like the dog face puffer fish. Why I like the dog face puffer, coloration. I love the fact that coloration varies from individual to individual, but all of them start off with a gray body and have black spots. One dog face puffer can have a lot of black spots, while another dog face puffer can have few black spots. Some of them have yellow bellies, while some have white bellies. I love the coloration that goes on from individual species to another individual species. 
I love the personality that dog face puffers have. They may take a little while to get adjusted to their aquarium, but once they get used to their surroundings, they get used to their owner, they're going to be begging for food like a puppy, and they're going to be a very entertaining fish, to say the least. They're going to be a fish that keeps you on your feet, and you're going to love the dog face puffer. Dog face puffers, in my own words, are a fun fish to keep, and you're going to enjoy having a dog face puffer in your saltwater aquarium. Dog face puffer fish are like most other puffer fish species. They have a lot of character and personality, which often gives them a special place in the heart of their keepers. Many keepers of dog face puffer fish swear that different specimens of this species show significant different behavior and personality. Something that isn't hard to believe for anyone who has kept other large fish, such as many large cichlids, where the same personality differences are abundantly present. Now let's talk about information in a dog face buffer, and we'll talk about keeping a dog face buffer in a saltwater aquarium. The dog face puffer fish is a saltwater species that are found in an area stretching from the area south of Japan to East Africa and South Wales. So you can find dog face puffers in natural environments in Asia, Africa, and Wales. The dog face puffer, Aerosron nigropunctuous, also known by the name Black Spot Puffer, can present a number of challenges to the home aquarist. The handsome, entertaining dog face puffer requires a large tank to accommodate its size and specialized feeding requirements. Dog face puffers, or black spotted puffer, as they're also commonly known as, within the aquarium hobby, are considered one of the most personable fish species. Dog face puffers are quick to realize where their food comes from and will recognize their owners on site. They enjoy the attention they receive from their owners and can even be hand fed. When I had a saltwater aquarium and I had a dog face puffer, he was eating right from my hand. It's pretty cool. So yes, I can say that dog face puffers will eat from your hand. It has even been said that dog face puff, puff, puffers are so interactive that they tend to become family pets. Dog face puffers are not an aggressive species and are suitable for most community saltwater aquariums. While this species is not aggressive towards other fish species, it is destructive towards corals and crabs, snails, etc., so it is not reef safe. Overall, a very fun community species with a very interactive personality. Dog face puffer's coloration is highly variable, with individuals ranging from brown to blue-gray, with varying amounts of yellow and black spots. While more rare, some individuals can be black, gold, or even orange. The coloration around the eyes and nose gives this species its name, whereas the rest of the body has a number of black spots. The shrinage is similar to other puffer fish, which gives them the appearance of hoovering in the water. Since the dog face puffer grows more than a foot long, it needs a large aquarium. A tank for this puffer should hold at least 90 gallons per puffer. The tank needs numerous large hiding places to help this fish feel safe and secure. Puffers are generally tolerant of other puffers that are not more aggressive than themselves. So yes, you can keep two or more dog face puffers together. Now, they do get pretty big. Dog face puffers can get a foot, so you're obviously going to want a large tank. 90 gallons and above is what I'm recommending for the dog face puffer. Now, the dog face puffer has a number of specific water conditions. It requires water with pH between 8.1 and 8.4. The specific gravity needs to be between 
1.019 and 1.025. As a tropical species, the dog-faced puffer needs water with a temperature of 74 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. The dog-faced puffer shares these requirements with many tropical saltwater fish. Additionally, the dog face puffer requires very clean water, so aquarium maintenance needs to be performed re religiously. Dog face puffers are a non-aggressive species, but they do grow quite large in size. Thus, they are more suitable for large 100 gallon or more community aquariums. It is really important to note that, which is why I'm repeating it on our show today. Dog face puffers do best with other non-aggressive community species and can even be kept with others of their own kind. While it is not uncommon for this species to be a shy feeder at first, especially if kept with more boisterous tank mates, it will soon become bold to the point where it can be hand fed. This species is not suitable for reef aquariums as it will chew on corals and may eat some invertebrates. Puffer fish have strong, ever-growing front teeth that they will need to wear down. Thus, they can often be seen chewing on live rock or similar items. Hard-shelled items such as Clams or shellfish are excellent as they provide a valuable food source and help the dog face puffer keep its teeth worn down. In the wild, this species is found living in or around coral reefs and thus will require a large aquarium with both open swimming area and rock formations. Because of the diet required for the species, it can produce a large bioload on the biological filtration of the aquarium. Thus, good filtration practices must be adhered to so that the water does not become fouled. Feeding and nutrition for the dog face puffer. The dog face puffer requires a varied diet of meaty foods and marine algae or preparations designed for herbivores and omnivores. Suitable meaty items include chopped shrimp, clams, squid, prawn, krill, and fish, along with shelled mussels or, or shellfish. It is best to feed this species multiple times a day, three to four times amounts of food they will consume without waste. So feed them three or four times small amounts of food or as much food as they will consume. Dog face puffers are not picky eaters and will quickly become adapted to a variety of prepared aquarium foods and an occasional algae wafer. Flake food is not recommended as even though they may eat it, they will not thrive on it. So again, good foods include fresh seafood, um, some algae uh, preparations that you can get at your local fish store in the frozen food section, uh, the marine foods. I know that uh, they have some specially designed saltwater fish food in the, in the freezer section of the frozen food selections. Uh, I think one of them is called LRS. And that's a great food to feed your dog face puffer. That's what mine loves. So, tank mates for dog face puffers. Very simple. These guys can live with fish that are too big to be eaten. They are not reef safe because they will eat coral and they will eat inverts. But you can keep them with canes. You can keep them with other puffer fish. You can keep them with triggers like the Niger trigger, like the um, Bursa trigger, like the um, Humu Humu Picasso trigger. There's a lot of triggers that do well with dog face puffer, fox face rabbit fish, um, gobies, eels, a larger angel fish. So anything too large to be in does well with the dog face puffer. My closing remarks on the dog face puffer. Aqua Alex's closing remarks. 
There are many different kinds of dogfish, pufferfish. Most are believed to be from different areas of the world. For dogfish pufferfish, there are yellow belly dogfish puffer, a dogfish puffer with gorgeous yellow to golden belly and side. Black and white dog face puffer, the most common dog face puffer. Brown body with black spots and white coloration. Each individual dog face puffer will have its own look. Do not let fish stores fool you. There is only one kind of true, real dog face puffer, and that is the black spot puffer. The others are members of the Aerosan family and look similar but get much bigger than the dog face puffer. These Aerosan puffers include puffers such as the narrow line puffer, which is the manila puffer, stars and stripes, etc. Oftentimes fish stores will label them as striped dog face, stars and striped dog face, etc. But they are not dog face puffers, they are aerosan puffers. The only dog face puffers are the aerosan um, black spotted puffer. Cost is generally anywhere from forty to one hundred and fifty dollars, depending on size and location of where you live. Dog face puffer fish will brighten up your aquarium. Dog face puffer fish are one of my favorite fish, and for many good reasons. They have awesome personality. They will beg for food by swimming up and down the glass. They will sometimes spit water on the glass lids. When not, when not fed, some may pout by going down to their rock and eye. They are so handsome and look just like a puppy. They are an aquatic pet. You will not regret adding one to your saltwater aquarium. Summary. Dog face pufflers require a pH of 8.1 to 8.4 and a salinity of 1.019 to 1.025. They can get up to 12 inches in length and require a large tank. So you're looking at 90 gallons and up for a dog face puffer. Feeding a dog face puffer loves seafood, so provide them a diet of shrimp, clams, snails, and other meaty foods. Cake made for the dog face puffer can be anything that is too big to be eaten. And that, my friends, is the dog face puffer, another favorite saltwater fish of mine. Well, I hope you learned a lot about the dog face puffer. If you have any questions about the dog face puffer, feel free to contact me on Facebook, Alex Cardinelli, or shoot me an email, AlexGoYankeesCardinelli19 at gmail.com. I hope you enjoyed this week's Fish of the Week, and I hope you learned a lot about the dog face puffer. Next week, we return to freshwater. Next week's Fish of the Week is going to be another personable fish, and it's going to be the clown loach. So join me next week as I talk about the clown loach. With that being said, I'll see you on the next episode of Aquarium Hobbyist Podcast. I want to thank you for your listen. Please feel free to leave a review on iTunes and my other podcast platforms, and share my show with all your friends. Enjoy the Aquarium Hobby, and thank you for listening. This episode of Aquarium Hobbyist Podcast was hosted by a fish keeper for the fish keepers. Let's together as fish keepers enjoy the hobby and raise some beautiful, healthy fish. Goodbye, everyone. On Friday, August 3rd, 2018, join Aqua Alex as he proudly celebrates his first year on Buzzsprout. It's time to slam the aquarium hobby on August 3rd as Aqua Slam makes its yearly debut in its inaugural debut. On this show, there's going to be special guests, 
wonderful fish keeping topics, music, entertainment, and much more. African cichlid guru Donovan Barger kicks off the show to talk about African cichlids in front of Our main event guest is Sam Garcia Jr., who's going to talk about Central American cichlids, monster fish, and crown roaches. Our topics include indoor DIY goldfish ponds, fish native to the United States of America, best fish keeping YouTube channel, thoughts on hybrid fish, and much more. Plus, music, entertainment, and more. So be sure to join Aquaslam on Friday, August 3rd, 2018, right here on Aquarium Hobbyist Podcast. Wednesday, August 15th, 2018, is going to be a historic day for yours truly, Aqua Alex. I will be turning 25 on August 15th. To celebrate my 25th birthday, I'm going to be doing a very special episode. I'm going to have a few special guests on the show to talk about tropical fish, and I'm going to talk about my favorite tropical fish. So join me on August 15th to celebrate my 25th birthday. Fish keepers, are you ready? Saturday, August 25th, 2018 is our next Fish Keepers Open Forum Q&A with Aqua Alice. Do you have a tropical fish question? Do you have a freshwater fish question or a saltwater fish question? Great, I'll answer them all. Submit your questions to Alex Go Yankees Cardinelli19 at gmail.com. You can submit a text question or a spoken audio question. Again, send your questions to Alex Go Yankees Cardinelli19 at gmail.com. If you're going to submit a spoken audio question, use the voice recorder on your smartphone, tablet, or computer. Record your questions and your name and send them to Alex Go Yankees Cardelli19 at gmail.com. I look forward to answering your tropical fish questions on Saturday, August 25th, 2018. Aquaplenish provides Aquarius with a whole new point of view on water changes. Make your aquarium water changes easier with an Aquaplenish electronic water changer. The innovative Aquaplenish water changer pre-treats water, monitors temperature, and replenishes your aquarium water with a push of a button. It also provides a power boost to your siphon gravel vacuum. 100% pre-treat, monitor, and replenish your aquarium with the push of a button. Pre-treated water provides the best quality water to replenish aquariums. The Aquaplenish water changer is the first retail product that provides an easy solution to pre-treat new aquarium water. For more information, visit www.aquaplenish.com. Purchase one at a special discounted price. Get $20 off an Aquaplenish electronic water change system by using the discount code AquaAlex2018. Aquaplenish.com. Go get yours today. You have been listening to Aqua Alex on the Aquarium Hobbyist Podcast. Come swimming back to the next episode for more tropical fish chat and information on keeping your fish happy and healthy. Check out Aqua Alex on the following social media platforms. Facebook under the name Alex Cardinelli. Twitter at Alex Cardinelli 1. YouTube channel Exotic Monster Fish Keeper 1993. And Instagram, The Real Alex Cardinelli. Thank <laughs> you.